as I mentioned earlier, we got another special guest coming through the One Extra studio today by the name of Tori Hansley. Last month I had Terry Walker, The Young Cross, and the Initiative Women in Jazz. Today I've got Tori Hansley, who I mentioned earlier plays the electric harp. And I've wanted to get Tori on this show for a long time. Not only is what she does very unique, she's also a very interesting intellect, musician, person, all of that. She does a lot of things. She teaches, she writes her own music, she's a band leader. Um, and she's got a lot to say. I've known her for many years. I've played with her across the UK and stuff. So I think rather than me say too much, I'm going to get into something with Tori Hansley. So all of that is coming up after this. Yeah. Yo, 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 work one. How's your mum? It's Snoochie Shy inside the place and I'm going to be taking over late nights from April 1st. No joking. Finger rave and chat show meets your front room whilst you're yamming up your chicken. Or if you're a vegan, I'll tight you. Sick guests, my brethren's in the gaff and music that ain't for your nan. The Snoochie Shy Show starting off next Sunday night from 11pm till 1am. Let them know! <laughs> <laughs> one extra. <laughs> Moses Boy. Moses Boy. One extra. BBC Radio One Extra. You're listening to Moses Boyd. And as promised, I am joined by a very, very special guest, Miss Tori Hansley in the building. How are you doing, Tori? Uh, thank you so much for having me, Moses. No problem. Wicked to be in. Wicked. Thank you so much. It's all good. And it's just, it's just lovely to see such a amazing instrument sat right next to me in it's one extra it's the beast <laughs> he's called the beast he's called the beast what's, what's his name be very afraid no it, it's called the beast it's, it's, oh that's his name oh yeah man uh, oh. my other one's called the hulk okay the, the hulk this, and the beast the beast well when you lug them around like you know I can relate they to get, that they get these names and I'm sure people are listening they're like what is the beast <laughs> there's a harp sitting in the studio and obviously it belongs to Tori Hensley um, so you're a multi-instrumentalist Right, you play harp. Yeah, man, and you could say that. Piano. Mhm, mhm. Um, I sing, but probably only in the shower. So you sing like, as well. Let's not really talk about okay, that. Okay, okay. All right. I didn't say that. Shower singer. But you do a lot of things, and I've wanted to get you on this show for a little while because, um, for those listening, I've played in Tori Hansi's band. We've done a lot of different gigs and projects together. Yeah. And I just think you're a really interesting, inspirational force of energy that's the best way to explain it and Bless you, man. I feel we have to share that across the airway so talk to us um yeah What's, I mean where I'm, do we start with Tori Hansley I'd say in terms of the work that I do that reflects my ethos about music and the mentality of music probably stems from freedom so I run an improv night once a month called freedom the art of improvisation that's at the vortex jazz club right it is yeah um I've been co-hosting that probably for about four years or something, I think, with Orphie Robinson and Cleveland Watkiss. I used to go um, all the time and I was a bit of an avid fan and I think I was really keen. So in the end, they said, you want to co-host it with us, which was um, an awesome blessing. And every month it's incredible and we get people from all different walks of life. We've had beatbox musicians in, we've had three classical cellists on one night. Amazing. We've had R&B artists who've never done free improv. We've had people who are like, you know, fresh off some killer tour, but, you know, just, you wouldn't expect, they just never stepped into that space of the complete unknown. And it's, for me, it's giving people that little step up and just give them, giving them a bit of faith in themselves and that courage to yeah. be able to go up and, you know, whatever happens, you'll be cool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, worst case, you fall on your face and you'll pick yourself up again. But actually, the beautiful things comes in the things you don't expect. Yeah. I think um, I think it was Miles Davis once said, you probably heard this quote as well, but he said, like, there's never a wrong note. It's what you do afterwards. Yeah. And it's like that path and that journey. And I think it's kind of, it is an ethos for me. It's communication. And yeah. it doesn't matter if you're an actor or a painter or, you know, whatever your medium is that you're talking and communicating to people through. I think it's... Yeah, and, and especially music, I think, is really powerful at the moment, and the arts, because I think we need it to find creative ways of talking and finding solutions and meeting people. And, and that's why I think music's great with improv, because, you know, you can meet on stage with someone that you don't really know, and you have to find common ground and yeah. really listen. That's really cool. So, and when we're working with young people, do you, how do you use what you do 
like all the improv um because you were also talking to me earlier about coaching and sort of personal development and stuff mm-hmm. how does that work with the music you create and is it, are they separate or do they no, intertwine? No, no. so when i'm working with people often it would be born out of i might be teaching them something and working on something you know specific piece and then i realize there's these areas that just cause fear or you just lose your spot and so i'd use techniques like certain techniques to get them back into the music ways of seeing the music ways of visualizing and then working on before you start a performance what you've got to say what's your story what's your shape of what you're saying so there's some quite specific things but there's lots of different tools and i've i've trained and done lots of different coaching training and worked with an incredible lady called Cass Templer um on different ways that you can get people into the right headspace and it's awesome and super powerful um i can't really sum it all up right now but no worry if that the, gives you a little idea that gives us an idea and as you know on my show i like to get people on the spot so we're going to get into that mm-hmm. and getting people into the right headspace with what you do on the heart but before that you know i've asked Tori to bring some music that kind of inspires her and i saw you brought a McCoy Tyner track Right. I have, yes. Yeah. What's it yes. called again? Walk, talk, spirit. Why is this one important? Talk to us about the grandfather McCoy, granddaddy of the piano. Well, I've seen I've been lucky to see McCoy a few times. Um with my dad actually. So me and my dad go and see quite a bit of music together. And uh you know, he hobbled on stage McCoy one of the last times I think I saw him. He's hobbling on real slow. Maybe one of his band members is helping him. And then he gets to the piano and it's like fire. and it's all out and yeah. you know the the piano's just like firewood he's like a new man it's over yeah, yeah, yeah. so and i think it that's really as well a great lesson to to see and i think jazz is wonderful for that because age is actually so admired and you see all those stories and that history that people have and all the lessons they have to show us yeah so yeah but in terms of this track I just love it. It's just kick ass and it's got so much heavy energy and he just goes for it and the weight that he plays with and that power. That's what I love about McCoy. Like you know he's there, you know he's in the building. Yeah. And uh yeah, I mean, what a legend. I'd love to play with him. And for those that know, I've listened to this show before and also for those that are tuning in maybe for the first time, on this show I like to do something called the on the spot challenge where I get all my guests to bring their respective instrument or tools that they use to make music and i get them to do something in the studio kind of on the spot and i think just by by the conversation we've just had tori i think it would be really good to get you just to do a live improvisation something you didn't plan and you know i think sure, it would kind of summarize a bit of a personality of what you do <laughs> and what you you know what you've kind of created and you talked earlier about sort of taking people outside themselves in a journey and i just really want someone to tune in wherever they are maybe they're in san diego right now and yeah. hear you playing harp and it take them somewhere so <laughs> nice are you man. good at that i can deal with that yeah sure no worries <laughs> on the spot challenge tori Ooh. hansley <laughs>
Tori Hansley. Let's talk about that piece you just played for us. Um, for those listening in, Tori Hansley just free improvised that beautiful piece of music for us. What, if anything, what was going through your mind or what was your process in doing what you did there? Well, I'd probably say the process is to switch off completely. So, okay. As kind of what what I've realized is the beautiful thing for me about like when you free improvise. And I think when you're performing anything, like when you're like proper in it, like you're not thinking. Mm-hmm. And if you want to get spiritual about it, you can be we like can get channeling. Spiritual. We, so we this can do is that. my show. Yeah. Um, that. Yeah, I think Keith Jarrett once talked about uh, in a really beautiful interview talking about how, you know, when it's really working, you're kind of like channeling some energy. Yeah. And however that is, that could just be through you, you know. But I think, yeah, it's when you manage to switch your mind off and you're just in it, in the moment, and whatever happens, you go there or you don't go there. You make that decision in that very second. Do you ever get moments where you sort of feel outside yourself? I don't know. For me, sometimes when I... I feel like when I'm at, like, the zenith or when I'm totally in it, it's almost like I can see myself performing. That sounds really odd, but... Do you ever have those sort of outer body where it's like, it's so in tune, you're not almost, you're almost on such an autopilot. I'm sort of not speaking for you, but for me, when I'm really deep in an improvisation or something, it's almost as if I'm not there and I'm watching myself do it. And then the minute I'm out of it, I'm back in my body. Do you have any? I think it's like totally surreal. Like when it's, when it's real, it's, it's just like magic really without sounding too hippie about it you know but no, like, hippie's good <laughs> hippie is good yeah but I think I remember one moment when I was playing with you actually it was one of your gigs at Ben Cromosa's gig and um, we were at Cambridge Jazz Festival and just that moment and we were looking at each other and you kind of lock eyes yeah. but it's not like us talking now like you know that's cerebral and shit but you know there's something going on and it's yeah. kind of surreal definitely something's kind of been happening on stage and words coming through my head sometimes I get words through my head actually when I'm improvising if it's really strong yeah and they'll just come out of nowhere like this little phrase and it'll go over and over and yeah sometimes I've had some real deep moments with that so you mentioned just slightly earlier there isn't much there wasn't much music out there for the heart so it leads me to the question what was a young Tory Hansley listening to what was going on? Where were you getting yeah, um, your, your fix? What was in the stereo, the cassette, what, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. all of well, that? I used to actually, apart from the stuff I've already mentioned, so we used to listen to a lot of rock. So um, my mum would put on things like The Clash, The Who, Rolling Stones. Um, they're big Bruce Springsteen fans. But we had a lot of like just like kick-ass tunes playing, as well as like pretty heavy stuff and like Mahavishnu Orchestra. Um, yeah, all sorts really, but I think it was that kind of the the two things, so the rock tunes and then like the freer stuff. Yeah. So and then I mean I love stuff with like a killer riff as well. So nice. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's probably where my mishmash of influences came from. And you've bought some tunes for us, and one of them is from the Clash, right? Absolutely. Why is that song important to you? Talk I, to us about that one. Well, to me, it just makes me feel like I just want to dance, you know. Like I think I spent a bit of time in Brighton. And uh, it was just always like one of those tunes that was just always on and we'd always go and dance to. And it just makes me think good times, man. And I think also probably the words London Calling. So London's really where I found my home. And so, um, yeah. And for those just tuning in, I am joined by harpist, pianist, composer, um, Tori Hansley. For those that want to check you out and know a bit more about you, like... I know you've done a lot of cool stuff. You've played with Nigel Kennedy. Yeah, that's um, right, man. Support for Courtney Pine. Where's, you know, where have you been playing and what's coming up as well? What's been going on? So um, last year was a really special year. Um, yeah, like you said, uh, we were supporting Courtney Pine at Ronnie Scott's, which was, um, yeah, a, a bit of a dream, really. Um, you know, I met Courtney years ago. I think he was signing some CDs and it was lovely and he um, he gave me a few words of wisdom and things that I still remember. You know, it's really lovely. And then it was great just to be asked to, to come and support him and be on the same bill. You know, it's one of those nice moments that you just have to clock. And, and you then, also play with Nigel Kennedy, right? You did a tour with him. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of where it all started, really. And um, yeah, I met Alfie Robinson when I was on that gig too. And uh we were doing a tour around Europe, so we were doing a Duke Ellington tour, and yeah, it was an incredible experience. So I was part of the band, and there was Doug Boyle on guitar, who used to play Robert Plant, um, Orphie Robinson, um, and just like 
Yeah, killer band. And Nigel was just, I mean, I've always looked up to him since I was, since I was little. He's a bit of a childhood hero for me. Um, a man with attitude, but a man who, uh, who reaches people's hearts. And I think, you know, people across the board, not just some elite category of people. He just, yeah. everyone, when, when I was playing with him, I just be chatting to people, love meeting random strangers and yeah. just like get into conversation and everyone knows him and yeah. everybody likes him and, you know, reaches out to what he's doing. And working with him was like wicked because when we'd go around, we'd play with orchestras. And Where's you... around? Where, where, where? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's be specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Let's inspire some kids. Where, where, where's around? <laughs> Um, there was some crazy mad gigs, so I yeah, think... Yeah, because I remember seeing some stuff on Facebook, like, how is there even a gig here? Oh, you've like, been stalking me. Uh, no, you know, you know, <laughs> lurker. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, yeah, one gig was in Bulgaria, in this very random little village up cobbled streets. We ended up going and finding people who worked on looms and buying, like, these really old school crafts and stuff. So anyway, a little mad village. So we'd go around and we'd often play with the orchestras of that area. So sometimes he would take his own orchestra, but often we'd go and use the orchestra of the area. So the local Bulgarian orchestra would come in and they were usually quite classical. So it was great having to play with them and they would have having to learn how to swing. So, um, but Nigel would kind of go around the orchestra and encourage everybody to get involved. So can you imagine being like, you know, a traditional oboist and you've never met someone like this crazy man Nigel Kennedy before and let alone been asked to like swing and improvise and then he'd literally put put someone on the spot like that and he'd just go hey you cat you improvise now yeah and they'd look at him like he was blooming bonkers and um but he'd really reach out to people and just say hey man just try something just 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 play a couple of g's just yeah. do something I love that and I think that kind of you know, I think we're very lucky for the mentors that we've we've had. I know you've had many people who've also have, shown you the way. I have, I have. I've yeah. been put on the spot a few times, yeah. which is why I have the on the yeah. spot challenge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we do it. We pass it on. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. No, no one, nothing, the sun will shine tomorrow. You know, nothing's going to, the end. The world's not going to end if you just try exactly, something Exactly, man. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, what's coming up? Well, I know you've got an album in the works. Yeah. So. You're on it, man. I am on it, yes. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Um, I guess we can't talk about when it's out yet or doing that. It's That's, coming out. Yeah, yeah, it's, so it's coming out. It's coming it's out. Coming Where out can soon. people find you and follow you and if they want to support and come and check you out? Yeah, so um, normal challenge. So, you know, Instagram, Facebook, socials. Um, but yeah, get in touch. What what's what was the inspiration behind the album? Let's That's do that. That's a better then. way cool. to do it. Right, yeah, because yeah, it is a little bit like. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's not right. Can't worry. let the cat out of the bag, <laughs> even for you. Yeah, and your lovely <laughs> listeners. Um, so yeah, I mean the the whole ethos behind the album is it's about where we stand at the moment in time. Um, That's so deep. Well, it could be deep, or it could be like you know really contrived, but it is deep for me. It's about. It's about looking back and looking at where we are. And for me personally, it's about our relationship to our incredible planet. And I think we're at a really cool time in history when hopefully we'll look back at, because I hope we're gonna start making changes. Because I think it's a time when we're starting to realize all the damage that we're doing to the planet. And, um, you know, but it's only through those times that then you can make change. And yeah, it's really a reflection of our beautiful world around us. So one song is called Polar Retreat, as you know, um, and that was inspired by Iceland and the raw, barren landscape there that's just untouched by humans. And it's really just about our relationship with, with our world and how I believe we need to be more connected. That's great. So everybody get connected. As I said, get connected, check her out. Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, YouTube, go and support. You know, if she's playing, go check it out. And we look forward to hearing the album. And thank you for coming through on my show. It's been a pleasure. Well, thank you, Moses. That's wicked. It's been so great to talk to you. And um, yeah, lovely to play as well. So thank you. Thank you.